Hello, hello, namaste and peace and blessings. I would like to thank you so much for joining me here in our prenatal yoga study group. And we are gonna get our class started here today as I ask everyone to find themselves in a comfortable seated pose. We are using the easy seat to help ground and root our bodies here today. Ensuring that our tummies are nice and tight at our navel. Our spinal cords are nice and elongated here, meaning we are not sunken. We have a control of that body with our shoulders melted downward away from our ears. When we melt our shoulders down, when we relax our shoulders down, it helps us release any tension that we may feel in our upper bodies that we are not aware of. As we gaze our eyes down or close our eyes, maybe take a nice deep intentional breath in. Exhale. Taking a moment to notice how the breath feels within the body. As we breathe our palms at heart center, coming into a seated prayer. Breathe in deeply. Exhale fully. As we hang out here in silent meditation for four natural breaths. Two breaths. As we breathe our palms above our head, coming into a seated salute, palms are reaching up towards the heavens, bringing our palms together, interlacing our fingers with our pointer finger pointing up. Shoulders flows upwards towards the ears, making that spinal cord nice and elongated here. Heart chakras open, chin is up. Arms, arms flow slightly towards the back of the room, feeling this slight back bend here. Three breaths. Two breaths. Exhale into center, flowing down to our prayer, breathing our palms at heart center, relaxing those shoulders downward away from our ears. Blowing our palms out towards the side as we breathe them back up, coming into a seated star. In our star, our palms are out towards the side. As we twist our bodies towards the right, if we are bigger in our months, if we have big tummies, we don't want to over twist. We don't want to go into deep twist when we have big bellies. So twisting the body towards the right as much as you comfortably can, lowering those palms downward towards the earth as we gaze over that right shoulder. Three breaths. Two more breaths. Exhaling back to center, flowing back into that star, twisting the body towards the left. Palms come downward towards the earth as we gaze over that left shoulder, being mindful of how deep we go into this twist. Three breaths. Two breaths. Exhaling the body back to center, flowing to that star, flowing into that salute. Exhale the prayer, relaxing the body here. We're gonna take a moment to simply just check in. We're gonna take a moment to simply go inwards, noticing how we feel right here, right now, at this present moment, simply being aware without judgment. During our practice here today, we may hear noises or sounds. We may become distracted. However, may we only allow in what is comforting and soothing for us in our practice here today. In our prenatal study group, we simply talk about anything postnatal or prenatal to help prepare us. But today we have a list of um, questions and guidelines that we're gonna go over. And we're just gonna speak about safety guidelines when we're teaching prenatal yoga, postnatal yoga. And safety guidelines are very important. It is essential because as yoga instructors, we must be aware of the poses that we can and cannot put our students into. Because depending on their months, they can do certain poses. But once they get into a higher month, once their bellies get bigger, we have to be mindful and we cannot put them into certain poses. 
but there are some poses that we cannot put them into regardless of how many months they may be. And do anyone know what those poses may be? Well, those poses are any poses that has them laying on their tummies. So we want to be mindful to never put a pregnant mom on their tummies. The moment they find out they are pregnant, we are no longer going to lie them flat on their tummies and have them doing poses like, for example, Sphinx pose, Superman, Supergirl. Those are just a couple of examples of what we will not do. So just be mindful of this. So prenatal yoga safety and guidelines. And the first and number one tip from this article is no compression of the belly. Um, as we all know, when people are pregnant, sometimes just wearing tight pants, tight clothing, tight jeans can make them feel not comfortable in their lower parts, in their abdominal areas. So we as yoga instructors, again, we want to make sure that we are not lying them on their tummies. Doing poses, um, for example, like staff pose, baby cobra, um, um, any pose that's going to have them on their tummies, Superman, Supergirl, um, just being mindful of those poses. And for those who are not aware of what those poses are, so these are pregnancy no-nos. We are not going to have them laying on their tummies. We will not have them in a staff pose. We will not have them in a baby cobra because the baby cobra, even though the torso is slightly away from the earth, the belly is still on the earth. Even a cobra, now, in a cobra, sometimes the torso is further away from the earth and a belly isn't on the earth. But it depends on the student. If the strength isn't there, they could still find themselves closer to the earth and apply pressure to the tummy. So no baby cobra and no cobra. But we can put them in enough dog, which is very similar to the poses, except their thighs are off the earth and their tummies is safe and off the earth. So simply being aware of the up dog, the cobra and the baby cobra. These are no-nos. The Sphinx pose. And of course, that Superman, Supergirl. See that there, we definitely don't want to put them in this pose because this pose is all pressure to the tummy. So no Superman, no Supergirl. Pregnancy, no-nos. But the only pose we can do out of the poses we just did was that up dog. See that? Taking the thighs off the earth taking a tummy off the earth, coming out of that up dog. So those are just a couple of, of examples of poses that compress the tummy. Okay, avoid lying on the back for long periods of time. Now, do anyone know why we wanna avoid laying the pregnant mom on their backs? Now, this is a pose that we must be mindful of because if they're in their beginning months of their pregnancy, they don't have a big belly yet. They are free to lay on their back and relax and soothe in recline positions that feels good for them. But once they get that huge belly, their tummies are just growing, we want to avoid putting them on their backs in a recline pose because of the size of the baby it gets so big. When they're on their back, back in their line flat, it applies pressure to the vena cava. And that can cause the mom to feel dizzy or even maybe pass out. So simply being aware of the student and those who can and cannot get in reclined positions. For example, a Shavasana, which is when they are lying flat on their backs, legs are parallel side by side, shoulder blades melts to the back, head is gazed up. This is a nice relaxing and resting pose, right? But when a mom has a big belly, too much pressure is on the vena cava. However, mom can go into Shavasana if they was to apply a pillow underneath their hips to elevate their hips when they're in their Shavasana. But we have to have a nice size pillow up there to elevate their hips. So pillows and props can come in handy if a mom must get in Shavasana. Using pillows are your friend. We also don't want to be doing any legs on the wall pose once they get to that certain months. Because again, that is a lot of pressure on that vena cava. See that there? So even though legs on the wall pose could be comforting and relaxing, even a wide legged legs on the wall, we wanna be aware. Again, if they have a bolster, maybe 
but we want to be mindful of that. A lot of times, moms like to do that extended hand to toe. It helps stretch the inner thighs and the hips. But once again, they are on their backs. So we want to be mindful of putting moms in this position when they're doing their extended hand to toe. And I'm using a strap here for comfort. But sometimes they'll just do the extended hand to toe. See that there? Extended hand to toe. Now, if they must get into these poses and they want to just stretch, we can put them in this pose just for a second. Now we're going to stretch that leg, bringing that leg up and switching sides real fast, swiftly, and then coming out of that position and maybe coming onto that side and resting in a fetal pose. <sighs> And maybe in their fetal pose, putting a bolster between their thighs and something underneath their head to help relax them for comfort in their fetal position. Most moms love fetal pose because it reminds them of the fetus within the body. So laying mom in a fetal pose is a very relaxing and soothing pose. Just being aware and being mindful. And of course, when we are putting moms into these poses, we as the instructor wants to be very aware of how they look, how they feel. You know, we got to be very mindful because sometimes they don't realize they're overworking themselves. Sometimes they do realize, but they want to keep up with the class or they don't want to let the instructor down. But yoga is about self-care. And we always want to instruct our students to do what feels best for them. I like to say a lot in my classes, my voice is just a guide, but please listen to your body and do what feels best for you. That is essential. Okay, so keeping that in mind, um, avoid strong ab abdominal exercises. Um, but we as the instructor wanna be aware of how we are cueing the clients and poses that we are having them do. So we wanna make sure that we are not doing any exercises with mom that's gonna apply too much pressure, too much force, onto the abdominals. One of the poses could be a boat pose. For example, in a boat pose, we're working our core muscles here. Our backs are nice and straight. And we have mom with her feet, her feet bam, parallel with the hands, or they can extend their legs up. And if you try this pose, you'll notice that you can feel it here in your abdominals. It is working your core, which is a great thing. But when mom is pregnant and she want to get into the bow pose, maybe she can come into that low bow. See that their feet is crossed at the ankles. She's slightly working her abdominals, but, but not a lot. But this full bolt, this full bolt, maybe we want to be aware to not do that and just have them in a subtle bolt. See that there? So, there, so mom still feel like she's doing a poses. She's still in that bolt pose, but she's not overworking her body. See that there? So showing mom some modifications, which will allow her to continue to do the poses she loves, but in a modified variation that is not gonna cause too much intensity to the abdominal, to the core, because we wanna be mindful of baby. We also wanna be mindful of mom overworking herself. Because we know. <sighs> now they say sometimes a down dog could be a strong abdominal exercise, but not really. So just being mindful of putting a client even in a down dog, being mindful to not keep them in this pose for too long. And also a down dog could be kind of an aversion as well, especially when they go nice and deep and they lower their head down and they're gazing at their feet, that is definitely an aversion. So being mindful of that, if we must put them in a down dog, just like in a recline position when they're in their shavasana on their backs, only for a short period of time, having them in that down dog, they may be dropping to their knees and coming into a wide-legged child's pose or puppy pose. This is our child's pose. This is our puppy pose. Legs come closer together, but keeping that space for baby, so not too close in our puppy. Torso comes down, arms extended in front of us, puppy pose. Whenever our arms are extended in front of us, even in a child's pose or puppy pose, it is called an extended. So this is our extended puppy pose. And this is our extended child's pose. So those are two rest poses that we can put a client into if we must put them in that down dog. 
keeping them on, not keeping them in that down dog for too long, not keeping them in that high plank for too long. And even if they are in that high plank, maybe asking them to drop to their knees or maybe asking them to flow into a low plank. See that there? Or drop into one knee or the other knee. See that? Or both knees. Because if they're in that plank and they lose their balance, they're going to fall down. Sit on their bellies. And we don't want to avoid that. So always allowing them or giving them the option to use that knee. See that there? So once again, in teaching prenatal yoga, we are always going to be mindful of the poses we are cueing and mindful of how they look in the pose. How is their facial expressions? Do they look like they're overworking their bodies? Do they look like they're too tense? You know, do they look like they're not comfortable in a pose, because if they're not comfortable in a pose, that leaves room for accidents. So we wanna pay attention to their comfort level. How they look, how they feel. Do they look like they're stressed in this pose? If so, we wanna cue them out. We wanna cue them into a more comfortable pose because prenatal yoga is about strengthening the body, the mind, the soul, but it's also about relaxing and soothing, not having a mom in distress. No, we wanna help her build strength, comfortability. So please keeping that in mind. Okay, so just avoiding those strong abdominal poses. Of course, avoiding strong back bends. Now, sometimes before we get pregnant, we, we love those back bends, right? Over bending that body, those, those full wheel poses, those bridge poses, because those back bends help with lower back pain. It helps, you know, keep that spinal cord nice and strong. But when moms get pregnant, we wanna just be aware, especially when they get into their higher months, of the poses that they are doing. Now, some moms love to do a camel, okay? So if they're in that camel, hands on the lower parts of the back, shoulders melts to the back, head goes up, head relaxes between the shoulder blades. They are in that camel, but this is more like a camel prep. See how our hands are on our lower parts of our back? So this is good. They can come into that half camel. But when they go into that, I'm sorry, they can flow into that camel prep and maybe even a half camel. See that there? This is a half camel, right hand to right heel, arms in the air, arm flows over the head. But maybe not flowing the arm over the head because when we bring that arm over the head, it takes us deeper into that camel. But if they're able, let them flow. But sometimes coming into that full camel, now that is a nice deep back bend. So that's something that we want to avoid. Okay, now we're gonna try camel on the other side and see how it feels. So camel pose, see that camel prep? Head relaxes between the shoulder blades. And then we're gonna take this, we're gonna do a half camel now. Left hand to left heel. Head relaxes back, heart chakra comes open, shoulders melt towards the back. Noticing how that half camel feels in the body. So we can do our half camels, we can do our camel preps, but we don't want to throw mom into a full camel. Now, if mom is able to do a full camel and she chooses to do a full camel, may mom do that on her own time, but we always want to be mindful of and just act on the side of caution, you know? Act on the side of caution, being aware. So no, no deep twist. So deep twist means like when we're sitting in our seated position and we're relaxing and soothing. We don't wanna go into a deep twist. So you know how we come over, gazing over that right shoulder and we'll feel that spinal twist, maybe feel that spinal crack. We don't wanna go too deep in that pose when mom is pregnant opposite side, seated twist, gazing over that opposite shoulder. We don't wanna to go too deep in that twist when mom is pregnant. Now, when she's new pregnant, maybe, yeah, she can twist all day long, feeling that spinal cord relax and soothe. But once she get bigger and have that big belly, we don't wanna be over twisting baby. Because keeping in mind, there's a limited amount of space in the belly for baby. So we don't wanna be twisting and squeezing. Also, noticing that when we shrug our shoulders and sink our back in, we're, we're squishing baby, right? Taken away from space, you may feel a baby in your ribs when you sit not proper. 
when we're sitting like this, because sometimes the belly gets so big, you'll see mom slouching over. But we want to remind them, keep those shoulders up, keep that back nice and long. It's creating extra space in the belly for baby. They don't feel the baby underneath their ribs as much. Now, sometimes they still do because they're having more than one baby or the baby's just big. But if we can decrease what they feel under their ribs by uh, reminding them to keep that back nice and long, keeping those shoulders down, maybe we can do that. <coughs> I'm sorry. So simply being aware of that. So no deep twist. Another deep twist, plenty of deep twists. We're just going to go over a few. And we, we, we all are yoga instructors. So we know what poses are deep twist and deep back bend. So we're just going over a couple poses here. Um, a lot of moms like to do the Sage Marici. You know, this Sage Marici is nice. You know, it's still allowing them to feel a little twist, a little lengthening here. But we're not going too deep. You know how when we connect our fingertips together and we're going deeper in that Sage Marici. We don't want to do this pose when mom is um, in her bigger month. Because once again, we are over twisting that body. Because I just did one side, I'm going to do the other side real quick. Sage Marici on the other side. This is fine, just relaxing and soothing here. But once we grab this hand and reach it around our backs and interlace those fingers, see that twist we're putting on the body? We can do this in our beginning months when we're smaller, but once we get bigger in those months, we don't want to be doing this with Sage Marici. This is the Sage Marici one, by the way. Heart chakra is open, chin is up, Sage Marici one. Sage Marici two is when they hinge at the hip, see that there? And head relaxes downward towards the knees. We definitely don't want to do a Sage Marici 2 because now we're leaning that tummy downward towards our thigh and we're literally squeezing baby. So no Sage Marici 2. Only the one because it's keeping that heart chakra open, it's keeping that chin up, and it's creating space in the belly for baby. But we don't want to interlace our fingers once the mom gets too big. We'll keep those fingers uninterlaced. See that there? It still allows them to be relaxing in a twist. Maybe they even want to bring their thigh in. See that there? When they bring their thigh in, it just got more space between the thighs for baby bump. So again, just being mindful of what we're teaching. And maybe we have a yoga class we're teaching many, more than one person. It's a big yoga class. Some moms could be just newly pregnant. Some moms could be in the middle of their pregnancy. Some moms could be at the end. So when we are instructing classes like that, we just have to be aware of what we're saying and how we are cueing, giving options for everybody in a class. You know, prenatal yoga is, is a specialties class. And we do a lot of cue and a lot of modifications and a lot of variations in our classes. That's why prenatal yoga, you know, can, can um, charge a little more because we're doing a little more. We're, it's just a specialties class. As, as we know, any specialties class can charge a little bit more. So just keeping that in mind. Prenatal yoga, you will find yourself doing more cue more variations and more mindful. I mean, we watch our students all the time, right? Well, I, I believe we do, right? But in a prenatal yoga class, we are watching them like a hawk. We are not just watching them. We are watching their face, how much they're sweating, if they look like they're stressed, if they look like they're in pain. Because again, if a mom has too much pain in, in your classes and they're like every few minutes apart, that's not pain from yoga. That's, that's, um, that's contractions. So we are being mindful, very mindful when we're teaching yoga. So it's, it's just a little different, a little bit more intensity, a little bit more mindfulness of the instructor a little bit more awareness of the instructor when we're teaching a prenatal class because we have to be, we have to be on point and on cue when teaching these classes. We have to be focused. Avoid inversions. We spoke about that earlier about down dog. A down dog is a lovely pose, but a down dog, again, is also considered an inversion. A dolphin pose is also considered an inversion when we're on our forearms, but ox is high in the air. We're gazing at our feet, dolphin pose. If we're putting them in a dolphin pose, just like a down dog, we want to have them in that, in that pose only a couple breaths, maybe two to three, just in there for a second. Then we're going to drop them down to that child's pose, puppy pose. So we'll go from that dolphin, dropping down to that wide-legged child's pose, puppy pose, allowing them to relax and soothe. See that there? We're not, we're not going to keep them in any emergency for a long time. Some say don't put them in an aversion at all because they get dizzy because you know, especially once they get bigger, that center of gravity isn't there. Well, it's there, of course, but they're off balance, right? That equilibrium sometimes, it just isn't right because that baby bump is getting big and it just takes off balance. They also get dizzy faster when they're in their higher months. Sometimes even when they have brain pregnancies, they just, you know, feel dizzy, don't feel well. 
So um, no inversions. And if we must put them in an inversion for two to three breaths and dropping them down to a child's pose, puppy pose, because as we know, those are very relaxing poses. We'll put them down in that pose. It allows them to relax and soothe and catch their breath and catch their balance. And if they're in that while they get child's pose, puppy pose for six to seven breaths, maybe eight breaths, we're gonna, um, we're gonna take some of these poses like restorative yoga poses. When we're teaching, when I teach prenatal yoga classes and we go from a pose that causes a little, that um, takes a little strength, and we go to a resting pose, we stay in that resting pose for about six to seven to eight breaths, sometimes even 10 breaths, depending on the class. We read the room and determine how long we're gonna keep them in that pose for. So simply just being aware of that. Um, sometimes you'll have people taking a prenatal yoga class because it can be very similar to a restorative yoga class, you know? So just keeping that in mind. But we as yoga instructors, we'll come up with our own unique ways of teaching our yoga classes, you know? So to each their own, just as long as we are aware and being mindful of our students, there's no wrong way to be, as long as we're teaching with safety at the forefront. That's what matters, all right? So avoid holding poses for too long, because again, we don't want to keep mom in poses for too long. That's going to cause the body to feel stressed. The goal is to build strength, but we don't want them to overexert their bodies. So please keep that in mind. So when we're moving from a line to a city, from a line to a seated position, when we're moving from pose to pose, basically, when we're transitioning a client from one pose to the next, next, we want to make sure that they flow nicely, that they flow lovely, and that we're not moving them too fast. Because as we know, moving them too fast can cause dizziness because so just taking them from pose to pose nice and easy and subtly and making sure that they're flowing right is essential, you know? So coming up with a class plan that flows is what makes a nice, strong yoga instructor. Just, we just want it to flow right. We want it to flow lovely. We, and we don't want to take them from a low to a high, just like that. Coming from a low position to a high position can cause dizziness. Coming from a high to a low can cause dizziness. We want to subtly take them from step to step to step, you know, from step to step to step, being mindful of the poses that we're putting them in. And oh, our main thing, please keep this in mind, reminding the woman to not overstretch. You know, sometimes when we get pregnant, we, the body can do things that it wasn't able to do before, like, right? for instance, stretching, right? Maybe they wasn't able to bring their hand to their toe and feel that extension. Maybe they wasn't able to flow the body and relax the body in these ways. But now that they're pregnant, they're like, oh, I can bring my leg all the way up. But prior to pregnancy, let's just say this student, you know the student, you had, you had her before she was pregnant and now she's pregnant and her, the relaxing hormone kicks in and now she was, this is how she was before pregnancy, right? Now that she's pregnant, she's legs straight up in the air. And we know that's that false illusion. That is that relaxing hormone. That, the relaxing hormone is the hormone that kicks in during the later months. And that hormone prepares the body for labor. It, it prepares the body to stretch. It prepares that, that cervix to open. It's relaxing the body. That's that pregnancy hormone right there. So the body can now do splits. You know, the body can now maybe can do that um, cow face. I'm in my cow face hands. You know, if the cow face is like this, so they're in their cow face, they're relaxing, soothing, they got their hands interlaced behind their back. Right? But prior to pregnancy, they couldn't get their hands back there. So we want to be mindful, hold up. We don't want to cause any hip, any um, shoulder injuries, right? So if we know that they couldn't get into that full cow face hands prior to pregnancy, maybe we want to, you know, remind them to Maybe let's not overwork the body here. Maybe let's just go into the cow face legs, relaxing the body, and maybe come into that half cow face where the hands are not touching or we're prepping the hands to touch, you know, taking that hand to the elbow and pushing that hand back. Slowly and gradually getting the hands into that full cow face. So just being mindful of that relaxing hormone, no splits. Because if they were able to do splits prior to pregnancy, split all day long. But if they were not able to do splits prior to pregnancy, we wanna be mindful of that. And we want so yes, in a moment they was able to do it, but tomorrow, later on at night, ouch, shoulder cuff, shoulder rotation pain, now their hips, their inner thighs are hurting or, or feeling not comfortable. Now they're walking with a limp because they overstretched that body. So as yoga instructors, just maybe being mindful and reminding the student, oh, a lot of times when moms get pregnant, sometimes up, oh, 
sometimes a little bit of yarn flows out. Oh, you know, have ever seen that? They gotta wear, you know, panty liners or, or a light pen or pad because sometimes, especially when they have bigger babies or they may have had more than one and we can also help them learn kingles. Kingles is just sitting in an easy seat, a regular position. They, they can also do it in a lying position, laying down. And they're just basically squeezing the vagina muscles, just squeezing it in, squeezing it in. And when they're squeezing it, they may feel it in their lower tummies, right underneath their belly button. And they're squeezing it in and holding it. And what it's doing is it is building a bladder. It's also building the muscles, the pelvic floor as well. It's, it's building that muscle at that pelvic floor. You know, so squeezing in and relaxing. So maybe we can help them with this and doing classes, squeezing it in, holding it, holding it in, holding that squeeze, doing that kingles, and then relaxing. Couple breaths, let them relax and catch their breath because remember they are pregnant. So we don't want to keep them squeezing and going, squeezing and going. Once they catch their breath, squeeze in again, squeeze, squeezing that muscles down there, nice and tight. Kingles, feeling that muscle get nice and tight. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Then we release it. Now they're pregnant, right? Okay, now after they have the baby, now we can be a little bit more intense with them, you know, squeezing, unsqueezing, you know, squeezing, releasing, squeezing, releasing. We can be more intense with it. But we also want to be aware of what type of birth they had, if they had any stitches, if they had a C-section. We're not being newsy when asking these questions. We're not playing doctor and nurse when asking these questions. We need to know these questions because when we're teaching them post-labor, we need to know if they need kingles, if we're going to show them how to do kingles, if we're going to work kingles into our yoga practice with them, if they had stitches down there, we want to be aware of this. If they had a C-section, you know, if they had a vaginal birth with no stitches, you know, that is something that we need to know when we're doing these postnatal classes. You know, some, even if you didn't have any babies and you want to just tighten up down there in that area, kingles, you know, the muscles, squeezing in, releasing, squeezing in and releasing helps tighten and firm. Okay, so remember that this isn't just an exercise for pregnant people. You can do this if you need it, if you want it. So tingles, mwah, beautiful thing, beautiful thing. Okay, so poses to strengthen a pelvic floor, tingles. Goddess pose, wide-legged chair, yogi squat. And again, these are just a few. There are many poses that we can use to strengthen that pelvic floor and prep, and prep the body for labor. We already went over the tingles. Can't really show you kingles because kingles is something that we must do from within. Let's go over the goddess pose and the warrior. Um, let's go over the goddess pose. So, you know, we're gonna go over the goddess pose real quick. Okay, so in our goddess pose, legs are wide legged, feet are outward towards the edge of the yoga mat, hands are in our cactus hands, and we drop down to our knees. See that there? We are in our goddess stance. This helps prep the body, prepare the body, the pelvic floor for labor. Goddess stance. We can flow the palms above the head. Chin is up. We can breathe our palms at heart center. Or we can stay in our cactus hands. Goddess. We can pulse it up and down as well. We can have them rock it. We're not going to stay in this pose too long. We're going to have them come out standing into a standing star. Palms to the side. Heart chakras open. Chin is up. This is just a resting pose, but there are plenty of poses you can put a client in after goddess. I'm just giving options here. So, <clears throat> so we went from that goddess to that star, back to that goddess. See how they flow together? So goddess, we are, right now I'm doing goddess pause, or this is goddess rock. This is goddess prayer. I'm sorry, this is goddess salute. This is goddess prayer. Standing star. Another pose we can come. From that goddess, wide legged, half forward fold. Or if they're able, if they're not in their higher months, if they don't get dizzy fast, wide legged forward fold, allowing that head to dangle down, gazing at the back of the room. Flowing back to that half forward, coming back up to that goddess if we choose, or we can come out of it bringing our legs together. Another pose that's on the um, list is a chair. Now, a lot of times in our chair, we have our legs together. We come down in that chair pose. We can be in our prayer hands or we can have our hands extended in front of us. But sometimes when we're in our bigger months, that baby between the thighs, right? So we got to come into a wide-legged chair pose. See that there? Or slightly wide-legged just to give some space for baby. 
Now we're in that chair. See that? Extended chair. Back to chair. But we're not going to do chair pose twist. We're not going to do chair pose twist. Why? Because we don't want to over twist the body. We don't want to cause any injury or harm. So no twisting poses in that chair. Just being in that regular chair, prayer hands, or extended chair. Also, another pose is that yogi squat, garland pose, malasana. Coming on down, relaxing the body here. This is a nice labor prep pose. Some people even give birth in that malasana, garland pose, yogi squat. And everybody's body will look different. Some people's legs will be wide apart. Some people will have their heels of their feet flat on the earth. Some people will be on their tippy toes. Some people will put a blanket behind their toes, their, their, their heels of their feet. Some people, whatever they may be in, this yogi squat is a nice labor prep pose. See that there? It's prepping and relaxing and soothing the body for labor. Maybe they're in their prayer hands. Maybe in their, maybe they're in their salute. Palms above the head, chin is up. Maybe they're in their prayer. Whatever they may be, and these are just a couple of poses to help prep that pelvic floor for labor. But of course, there are many poses that we will come up with and do and work into our yoga practice, our prenatal yoga practice. <sighs> sometimes when moms get pregnant, as we know, sometimes lower back pain become an issue, right? So there's a lot, many, many poses that we can do when it comes to lower back pain. But one of the number one poses I like to do is cat cow. On the hands and the knees, palms are flat on the earth, feet are relaxed, elbows are slightly straight or straight, whatever feels good for you, dropping that tummy down to the earth, filling that curvature here in the lower spine, the lumbar spine, well, let's see that there, and maybe we can do hip rotations. So this is a, we are rotating our body at our hips here. So we are cat cow, but we are, so we are cat cow, but we are rotating the hips. See that there? So we are in our cow and we're rotating the hips, finding a pause, chin is up, head relaxes between the shoulder blades, allowing us to go deeper in that cow pose. Noticing how this feels in your back right now. Just imagine being pregnant. It's a relieving pose. It's a soothing pose. You can flow to that cat, bringing that chin up towards the clavicle. And maybe listening to your body will come into the cat. Sometimes when we have really big bellies coming into that cat can squeeze the baby. So being aware of the cat pose. But that cow pose is where we feel a lot of relief here. See that there on the hands and knees. Um, and I, we already spoke about puppy pose for the lower back pain as well. So we went from that cow pose, rotating the hips, right? Then going down to that puppy pose, wide legged, Buttocks is in the air. Right chakra comes downward towards the earth. It doesn't have to touch. Our third eye chakra, our forehead connects to the earth. With our arms extended in front of us, we are in our puppy pose. Gazing our eyes down or closing our eyes. Allowing our shoulders to melt forward. Noticing how this completely relaxes the body. And we're going to use this pose to end our session here today. So flowing into that puppy pose. But is in the air, noticing how this puppy pose feels in your lumbar spine. Heart chakra is connected to the earth. Third eye chakra, which is the forehead, is connected to the earth. As we take nice, subtle breaths here. Noticing how the breath feels within the body. With our eyes gazed down or closed, then we take a deep breath in. Release the breath. We're going to hang out here in our puppy pose for five natural breaths. Three more breaths. With our arms extended in front of us and our palms flat on the earth, we're going to spine a wave our bodies out of our puppy pose. 
using our palms to push our torso forward, filling us in the spinal cord, using our palms to push our buttocks towards our heels, feeling that spinal wave, feeling the rhythm of the spine, just feeling that body move, feel that spinal cord rotate. Three more breaths, spinal wave. <sighs> Two breaths. As we find our paws coming back to that table, we're gonna drop down to that cow. Exhale to cat. Flowing back to our table. As we cross our feet at our ankles, we're gonna flow into a seated position. <clears throat> Any seated pose that feels good for you, may you find your seat. I'm gonna come back into that half lotus. As we are using our easy seat to relax and soothe, ground and check in with our bodies. With our eyes gazed down and closed, breathe in deeply, exhale fully. I would like to thank you so much for joining me here today in our prenatal yoga study group. I hope that the session was informational. I hope that we learned a little bit about prenatal, postnatal yoga and um, what to do and what not to do and basically safety guidelines and when teaching prenatal yoga. It was a pleasure and I'm thankful to be here with you. The light in me sees, appreciates and respects the light in you all. Namaste. Namaste.